This is Rico Brouwer from the Netherlands talking to candidates of the Pirate Party for the upcoming European parliamentary elections. And my guest is Matthias Bjarneman from Sweden. Hi. Welcome. Thanks. So this interview is for our listeners from Sweden to get to know you as a candidate and for pirates from other countries uh, to learn what's going on with the elections in your country. So to start off with, how would you introduce yourself, your profession and your political experience? Well, so my name is Matthias Bjarnemalm, but I'm, I'm usually called Mob by everyone because it's much shorter. And apparently some people have a problem with pronouncing Bjarnemalm. Anyways, so I'm, uh, I'm active with the Swedish Pirate Party. I've been active since more or less the beginning in 2006. And for the last uh, little bit over seven years, almost eight years, I've been working in the European Parliament. First as head of office for one of our Swedish members, and then I helped with the transition when Julia Reda got elected. And since then, I'm working as an advisor in digital policy for the for the group where we're currently in. All right. So, are you currently in Brussels then, or in Sweden? Well, currently I'm in Sweden. I'm on I'm on unpaid leave for the for the elections. Okay. So um, I'm I'm back in Sweden uh, rallying the troops. Okay. So everybody will probably know where Sweden is, but how would you describe what's going on in your country? Uh, in, in the perspective of these upcoming elections? Well, we're having a very brief election campaign. We had the, the problem with forming a government that took a couple of months, which meant that up until end of February, everyone was uh, totally focusing on that. And then only after that, people suddenly realized that there's a European Parliament elections coming up. So we're having a fairly short election period. And uh, I would say it's uh, probably, I mean, everyone says that it's the most election, uh, important election ever. But if you look at the uh, the efforts made by the bigger parties, this is clearly not a big issue in Sweden. Europe has always been sort of a, a second thought for, for Swedish citizens, where they always think that the, the national elections are the, the key priority. And then, you know, the big parties send has to to Brussels. Yeah. So what's turnout then? How many people show up for election day? Uh, well, uh, I think we had the best results ever uh, last time, and it was roughly about 50 percent. Okay. And we have like around 90% in the national elections. So there okay. you have the comparison. Yeah. Oh, same in Holland, I, I suppose. Yeah. So you have been working in Brussels and Strasbourg uh, for the last years. Um, the, the question that I want to go to is, uh, you're up to another four or five years there. Definitely. I think if you get into this, you, you, you need to um, enjoy it. It's, I mean, the pirates, um, as a small political force, we're sort of uh, avant-garde in when it comes to policies. So that means that once you get into the European Parliament, you have to uh, basically brace yourself for being voted down quite a lot. Uh, most of the older parties aren't really uh, ready for our ideas. But uh, if, if you're used to that, then of course it's, 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 it's fine. And what you can do in the European Parliament, which is very difficult in national parliaments, is that you can get smaller parts in, you can tweak the details in a way where which might be much more difficult in a national context. So even if we're losing on the bigger issues, we're putting our topics on the agenda, and we're squeezing in uh, um, awareness about the, the importance of digitalization. Yeah. So if you focus, if we do focus on the big issues, what's according to you is the main area of policy making that should be addressed in the coming, uh, upcoming five years? So of course, I mean, there's there's a whole wide array of difficult political topics. But uh, what happened right now, what, what makes the pirates relevant is that digitalization is changing uh, society forever. Uh, I mean, the society of today is different than 10 years ago and 20 years ago because of digitalization. Uh, my, my most important tool is my phone, which is basically always connected to the internet and to my memory and my, my social life and everything is there. So regulating uh, uh, internet and digitalization is is the key topic right now to make sure we don't get it wrong. Yeah. And and that has been, if you look back at European legislation, you had a digital agenda two mandates ago, and this mandate you have had a digital single market. And next mandate, we don't know what the commission will name it. They will have a new fancy name, but there will clearly be a package of digital policies that need to be addressed. How do you, how do you see the future of the European Union? Apart from those agendas, the European Union as a whole, with countries trying even to leave it sometimes. What, what's your view on the future? Well, uh, I think if you look at the numbers, the, the, the attempts of the UK to leave, uh, and I'm still fairly confident they will leave eventually, uh, has reduced the interest in the rest of Europe for, for leaving the EU. Uh, suddenly, when you see the benefits on the table, it becomes less attractive to, to push for an, 
for, for an exit strategy. But uh, that is uh, as important as it is. Membership questions is a very secondary uh, nature for the European Parliament that is mainly handled by, by the Council. So um, whether there will be, I mean, what we see up ahead is a few former uh, Yugoslavian countries trying to join during the next mandate. That's the only shift in memberships that we, mm -hmm. we can predict. But, but that is basically entirely out of the scope of the European Parliament elections. Okay. So you have been in the, in the European Parliament or working at the Julia Reda staff. Over the last couple no, of I'm, I'm working as a policy advisor for the for the group, so I'm not oh, working in her office. Oh, thank you for clearing so, that up. So I, I, okay. when, when she got elected, I worked for her for a couple of months, yeah. uh, uh, setting up her team and uh, setting up her office. And then uh, after that, I got recruited by the group to work uh, with digital policies for the entire group. Excellent. But that is sort of an arrangement between the pirates and the group. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Um, you will be full full out pirate for Sweden then, though, <laughs> the next time around. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So I'm running for the Swedish Pirate Party and uh, currently I'm on leave from work yeah. so I can focus on the campaign. So, um, but you have worked with um, pirate parties throughout Europe uh, these last couple of years. I, I remember seeing you here in Holland in 2017. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, on my free time I, I try to help out uh, pirate parties where I can. I've been to Holland for elections, I've been to Iceland for elections, um, and uh, I've been to a lot of other countries meeting the local pirates in Czech Republic and Germany over the years. Mm -hmm. I was also part of setting up the European Pirate Party uh, and was on the board there for, for a short while. And uh, I was part of setting up the European, uh, the Young Pirates of Europe. Yeah. So I've been working with the, the community of, of pirate parties and pirate youth organizations throughout the years. But that, that I do in my free time. That's <laughs> not my paid work. No, but that is something that the uh, in which the Pirate Party as a as a pan pan country movement uh, it, it is set aside from all the other local parties, if you will. I mean, there's DM twenty five and 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 maybe some other ones, but Pirate Party is the is the one true uh, party that extends countries. I think uh, to, to a large extent you're right. I mean, uh, the other political groups have pan European parties as well, but I think they call. Uh, coherency within those parties are much lower than with the pirates, where we have a an identity that is clearly identical wherever you go. If if you go to, I mean, I've I've seen that when I travel. When I go to the Czech Republic and I meet the local pirates, they they look and they talk and they act exactly like the local pirates back in Sweden or the pirates I met in Iceland. We might differ on on smaller details on policy when it comes to things that have you know different countries have different cultures and some issues but but at the core values all pirates are the same wherever you go in europe and that's a pretty remarkable uh experience but it's also not surprising because i mean we're all uh, digitally active so we constantly talk to each other uh across borders and then of course you build this common identity and common culture yeah so julia reda has become somewhat of an authority on copyright reform uh, of the last period um if you were elected how would we look back on your term in five years from now? Well, uh, so having seen her remarkable achievements, I, I can't say that I will be uh, as big of a star in the EU bubble as she's been, uh, but I can strive towards it. But I will mainly focus, so the copyright reform is more or less done. Otherwise, I would be all over it because, I mean, it's been my main focus for work for the last uh, five years, more or less. But uh, what we see coming up is a lot of regulation on, um, on filters which will go beyond the copyright directive. So you have the terrorist content uh, regulation and you have uh, probably the, the overhaul of the e-commerce directive where we can also see discussions about filters. So uh, I will probably focus mainly on a, on a fundamental freedom of speech uh, approach when it comes to the digital sphere. So the right uh, to share thoughts and culture uh, over the internet. Uh, and that, that is the fundamental struggle. If we lose that, everything else will pale in comparison. If we don't have the free and open discussion online, we won't have it anywhere. Yeah, well put. So final question. Um, these local parties that you have in all the participating countries, they are working together in groups in the European Parliament. Uh, you have the Greens, you have ALDE, and you have a bunch of other ones. Uh, how do you position uh, the Pirate Party in that landscape, if you will? So when the Swedish Pirates got elected in 2009, we decided to negotiate with a couple of the different groups, mainly focusing on ALDE and the Greens. Um, and we back then decided that the Greens were the best platform for us to push for our agenda. And then when Julia got elected five years ago, uh, we negotiated with the Greens and uh, with ALDE, but also with GUA. Uh, and she also came to the conclusion that the Greens served 
the best purpose at the time. Uh, we will do the same now, but the difference is that for the first time we expect to have pirate parties from multiple countries elected. So what we have agreed on is that all pirate parties will negotiate together and go to the same group. But which group we will go to will depend on those negotiations. So it's impossible to say that uh, before the elections, because it entirely depends on which other parties are in the different groups. And even if there will be new groups formed, that might be relevant for us to look at. Yeah. So there, there's no commitment for, for the European pirates to belong to any specific group of the current, currently existing groups. Existing groups. Uh, but there is a commitment to go together all European pirates as one. Excellent. All right. So excellent. Uh, any last remarks that you want to give uh, to uh, pirates all through European Union or pirates in Sweden? Well, uh, I would want to address this to all the pirates that aren't in Sweden. Uh, look at the pirates in the countries where we're running and see how you can help. There's tons of way of, of pushing our topics and raising awareness around uh, candidates um, and in, in other countries than your own. Or you can come visit us and help us on the ground. I mean, we can easily find uh, couch surfing for people arriving to Sweden who want to help out with elections. So if, if you want to get involved and there's not a pirate party in your own country running, just get in touch with us that are running and, and we will help. Well, and we will help you help us. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you so much, uh, Matthias Bernemal from Sweden. Um, this video and other videos will be up on a website called european-pirateparty.eu. Uh, thanks for this talk and good luck in your elections. Thanks. Take care.